Yeah, um, I would like to very quickly provide an introduction to um, cryptocurrency. So um, it's basically also reconciling what the previous speaker has said. Uh, actually, um, we have founded a blockchain center here at the Frankfurt School to push uh, blockchain because we really think it's important for digitization. And my personal opinion here is also that blockchain technology will uh, like uh, change the entire financial sector. Uh, so wh wherever you have finance in, there will be blockchain tomorrow. There will be the euro on a blockchain based system in say 10 years. There will be stocks being listed on blockchain systems. You have crypto assets and so on. Uh, so there, will, there are strong changes ahead and not just for the financial organization, say here in Frankfurt, but for any financial department of any company out there because they have to take, for example, the euro on a DLT basis, like that's blockchain, and put it uh, somehow into their annual statement. So there are strong changes ahead in the upcoming years. But also, as the previous speaker said, it's very, very, very early. I typically compare blockchain technology um, in iPhone generations. And um, the question now is for you, uh, is there anybody here in the room having an iPhone 1, uh, like 12 years ago? Yeah, one person out of 100, so you have been the first at that time, and now I don't have to ask, everybody has at least one smartphone. So we, we had zero market penetration 12 years ago with concerning smartphones. Now we have 100% market diffusion. Um, and you see here the curve concerning smartphones went to zero to 100%. And that's exactly the same happening with blockchain technology. But concerning blockchain technology, I would estimate that we are below 1% uh, market diffusion. We are really in the beginning and it will take 10 or 15 years uh, until we have reached like 100% or 15 years until we have reached 100% of all possible financial uh, transaction. And this affects the financial sector. It also affects the way business is being done. And for this reason, uh, we as a university also feel that we need to deal uh, with this topic. Um, I also typically tell the story that I, I have a daughter. She's uh, three years old. And if she is able and capable of studying business in 15 years, I would try to prevent it uh, because it would be the direct route to unemployment um, because uh, it will also be digitized uh, and business as well. So in case business people are not going digital, including universities, there will be no need for them because technology will take over all kinds of uh, administ pro administrative processes. Um, yeah, to get it right, um, um, it's, it's always interesting to indicate how large the ecosystem is in case you are taking all German DAX companies together and count their headcounts, how many people are actually working on blockchain-based uh, projects, you end up with a number of uh, 700 to 1,000 full-time employees in all DAX uh, companies, DAX uh, listed companies, including the larger companies below to also have in Bosch, LBBW and Commerzbank because they are very important in this ranking. So you have 700 to 1000 here and Additionally, you, if you can compare it to crypto ecosystems, and uh, so you have heard about the cryptocurrency called Ethereum, that's the second largest cryptocurrency, and this ecosystem is estimated to have 100,000 people uh, programming and developing. So you have 100 people, uh, uh, sorry, 1,000 people in German uh, larger companies, and you have 100,000 people in the crypto ecosystem of Ethereum. And that's also then very clear where the dynamic is coming from. It's not coming from larger organizations. It's coming from the startups, and it's coming from companies like the previous uh, one. Uh, there are numerous out there who are really pushing these, these crypto technologies. But of course, media is not listening too much to startups. That's as always, and therefore there is extremely much happening in the background, whereas in the forefront, uh, media is uh, typically listening to, to larger organizations, um, and they are not doing as much as thousands of startups worldwide. Yeah, this is a matrix I, uh, I typically show. You see here on the upper half information transmission, on the lower half value transmission. On the left hand side, you see uh, the traditional world. And on the right hand side, uh, you see the new world, the digitized world. And you see also here that blockchain at the end of the day is the technology uh, where people have been more or less looking for because they, um, it will revolutionize value and money, moving it from a traditional physical backed uh, yeah, value storage to a 100% digitized uh, value. Similarly, like the email has and is revolutionizing um, the, the letter and the stamp and the post office and so on. Yeah? So this is uh, like a very similar movement. 
Um, in case we are now turning to cryptocurrencies, what you see here is uh, similarly uh, to be used like the quote table of stocks um, at the Deutsche Börse. But what you see here is a ranking of crypto uh, currencies. Um, I had to renew the screenshot because prices went down so much. And to show you the, the truth, uh, I had to um, adapt the screenshot. Number one, uh, by far number one is still uh, the Bitcoin as we know it. It's now. 10 years old, and um, the point is here that Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency has the goal to transfer money internationally. You can say this, but, and, I, and here I would like to talk different than my previous speakers. Um, what you see here, it's not currencies. Bitcoin is not a currency, not at all. Uh, it's a crypto asset. Uh, you can compare it to a commodity, similarly to gold, but it's not a, a currency at all. But it started with the thought of potentially being a currency, and therefore people call it that way. But it's not a currency at all. It's more like a, a commodity, and therefore uh, you can compare it to some degrees uh, to the mechanism how gold works. But of course, gold uh, without a physical backing. Uh, number two uh, is at this point of time Ripple. Um, that's an interesting cryptocurrency for the interbanking uh, market. And number three in my mind is currently very important. Uh, it's called Ethereum. Ethereum is um, a cryptocurrency which has two strong differences with regard to Bitcoin. The first uh, difference is that you can execute smart contracts so you can program money. This means in illustrative terms you can implement escrow accounts, uh, dividend payments, uh, consortium credits, and so on via smart contracts on top of Ethereum. And then there is another point which really needs to be emphasized, and this is um, that you can install second order cryptocurrencies on top of the, of the platform called Ethereum. You might know this, uh, it's called ICO. But it's uh, fascinating to see that ICOs um, have in the past now been a mechanism for funding uh, startups. Um, billions of assets have been used to fund startups, and these funds are, at least to some degree, uh, used to also produce innovative um, ideas. How did we get there? Um, there have been uh, like freaks, fans, and uh, yeah, crazy people in the very early times uh, dealing with this topic, not many. And then uh, some years later, you had uh, founders, criminals, and others joining the game. Um, a couple of years ago, you had high-tech investors, hedge funds, and so on joining the game. And now in these months uh, or these days, you see that larger financial institutions like asset managers, funds, banks, and so on are strongly getting interested in also joining this topic. But you have several reasons why these large-scale uh, financial institutions so far um, are like Pa pa kind of sitting outside uh, the room uh, because custody infrastructure is, mis is missing, uh, hedge uh, fund structure uh, is missing, um, so you ca cannot hedge these coins. And for this reason, you see here uh, that this entire ecosystem um, needs to be improved. And this is also indicating that it's just very, very, very early. Um, I would now like to quickly highlight where we're coming from and uh, where, we, uh, where we are getting. I jump over here. So um, how, is, how can we reconcile cryptocurrencies uh, as we know them and traditional payment mechanisms uh, as we, of course, also know them? And it could be a platform like Ethereum, but it could also be another platform. But the thought of Ethereum with smart contracts and so on is really key here. So why do you actually need the cryptocurrency Ether? Because you can execute uh, ownership transfers with it. So I transfer an asset on the platform Ethereum. This costs me approximately one US dollar cent, which I have to pay as a transaction fee. Similarly, I can execute business processes, which also cost me money, say an escrow account. This is all done by smart contracts, uh, which look like this. Um, and you can have like standard formats uh, of smart contracts, which are called, for example, ERC20 token, which allows you to exchange specific uh, tokens uh, via uh, other tokens. And now it gets really interesting because you can use these smart contracts to deploy second order cryptocurrencies on top of the first order uh, platform called Ethereum. And then you end up with solutions such as MakerDAO. So the underlying asset Ethereum can be entirely volatile, but you have a fixed asset like a Make MakerDAO uh, previously noted put on top of this platform. And now it's get interesting and also matching what previous speakers have uh, shown us, because now companies are starting to put the euro and traditional currencies on top of Ethereum. So you take 
Ethereum as a base platform and you put traditional currencies on top of it. Uh, there are multiple projects out there where, for example, the euro, as we know it, is been put on top of Ethereum such that you can make it part of smart contracts. And the future is where people are also now starting to work on uh, to put stocks on top of Ethereum, cars, loans, and even machines and real estate. So all assets out there are currently being experimented with to put them on blockchain basis. And this is now also the final slide of this very, very quick introduction. What you see here is uh, that at the end of the day, we will have asset management platforms probably being um, initiated by cryptocurrencies. And these are then platforms which allow a seamless trading of all kinds of assets like cryptos, fiat currencies, assets and others. You can trade them 24 seven on a worldwide level. There is no clearing and settlement. So there is no, uh, uh, no custody structures as we, uh, as we have them now. Um, and you can also transfer these assets internationally without significant transactions fees. I think it goes quite strongly in this direction, but you also see that these platforms, I, I would say at least two, three years ahead. But the key is here that infrastructure is being built by cryptocurrencies. So it's not a Ponzi scheme. It's like infrastructure being built. And these infrastructures are then leveraged by on top applications, which you are installing in the form of smart contracts um, on top of these asset management platforms. In this case, I really have to emphasize this. It's called Ethereum. Uh, it could also be EOS. It could also be a banking consortium. But don't forget here, and that's my last word, don't forget here the dynamic by ecosystem size and by HR power is coming from the crypto startups and from thousands of startups which are like investing uh, thousands of mandates into the systems, while very often uh, the larger financial organizations and corporations are very often just uh, experimenting with it yet. So the startups are getting uh, done things here quite intensively. And therefore, I think it's, it's, quite, it's worth it to think about what potential role cryptocurrencies could play in the future. And with this, uh, we can also uh, directly hand over to, um, to Dominic. Maybe we have one or two questions. Uh, Dominic Schiene, you might not know him, is uh, one, of the, one of the founders of a, a cryptocurrency which is based in Germany. It's called uh, IOTA. It's a, it's a fascinating uh, thought which they had to revolutionize the technology. Um, and it can also be sorted into this uh, rating or this ranking which I have shown earlier. Thank you.